Tonight, I want to expose how Satan has been working in our culture in order to disarm him in your life. If you know the battle strategy of the enemy, you have the ability to ambush him. Failing to understand how Satan works can allow him to get a foothold in your life. And the Bible warns us if he gets a foothold, then he's able to get a stronghold. This is a huge topic, spiritual warfare, and I'm really only touching on the surface of it tonight. I'm focusing mainly on spiritual warfare that takes place in our minds. Did God really say? This is a tactic of the enemy that's been used throughout the centuries from the very beginning when Eve was in the garden, did God really say, and he's still using it today? A well-known passage when we talk about spiritual warfare. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to resist in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. Stand therefore, having your waist girded with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the fiery arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the sword of the spirit, you know, this is so important in spiritual warfare, the word of God. It actually has everything we need to fight the enemy. God's word is so powerful. Most of us are aware of the first question Satan asked, did God really say? And as I said, this continues to be a primary weapon of Satan. His tricks don't change. He's been using the same ones all through the ages. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So you can see from this scripture that quite clearly the battle is actually in our mind, casting down imaginations, the things that we are thinking about. A lot of the battle comes from the things we imagine in our minds. You know, Satan, he imagined, I'm great. I'm going to be better than God. Casting them and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Where do we get the knowledge of God? We get the knowledge of God through his word. That's why this is so powerful. We need the knowledge of God if we're going to fight the enemy. Bringing every thought into captivity. So we know there's a real battle in our mind if we need to bring every thought into captivity to Christ. Do you know who you are in Christ? Do you know, this is really, really powerful. One of the reasons we often don't have power in our lives, in our walk, we don't defeat the enemy, is because we fail to realize all that Christ has done for us, all that he has accomplished in the work on the cross. We fail to realize that we are created in the image of God. That blows my mind. You and I are created in God's image. We bear the stamp of God upon us as males and females. We are sons and daughters of the King of Kings 
and the Lord of Lords. Like, imagine if you are a prince, you know, that brings great self-esteem. Wow, I'm a prince. I'm a princess. Well, you know, we are princes and princesses of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And actually, it says we are heirs and kings and priests. So when we start to understand who we are, that actually can help to change all of the messages that we've received from the enemy that have actually been telling us, you're not good enough, you're not valuable, you're a failure, you're a loser. All of those things, when we start to actually dig into who we are in Christ, all of those things take less hold in our life. That is how we can actually start to change the way we think and feel about ourselves, which gives the enemy a foothold into our lives. You know, for a long time, I really struggled with a spirit of rejection. My dad, he loved boys. Boys were really important. He was a farmer, wanted a football team. And you know, that had real lasting damages in my life. And the way that I was able to overcome that spirit of rejection was knowing who I am in Christ. That was the thing that was able to break the lie of the enemy that says, you're not valuable. You're not worth anything, knowing the truth of who I am in Christ. 